Vicky, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, before we get into to how the digital euro could potentially um, change the uh, financial system, um, first of all, how would the digital euro actually work? Could people have their salaries, for instance, paid uh, this way? Uh, where, would it be, where would it be stored? And, and our savings accounts uh, uh, included as well? Um, I think before we go into actually how the digital euro would work, um, I think we need to stay, take a step back and just real quick explain the difference between private and public money. Public money is money created by the state or the central bank when it issues coins and banknotes. So in Europe and in the Eurozone, that would be the European Central Bank that creates physical cash euro notes for Eurozone countries like France, for instance. However, the majority of the money that we use on a daily basis and that we intera interact with is actually bank deposits, which is private bank money. And the distinction is really key to the digital euro because private bank money is essentially a claim on the private bank. It's a promise from the private bank to pay you the money that you have in your bank account. And of course, there's a degree of risk attached to that because the bank bank is a commercial enterprise that can go bankrupt. And as opposed to private banks, the central bank cannot go bankrupt. And so public money, which is essentially what the digital euro is going to be, and I'll, I'll go into that, but public money is essentially what creates trust in our monetary system. Because I trust that the day that I want to take my money in my bank account and I want to transfer it into physical cash, that I can do that. And so essentially what the digital euro is supposed to do is to be a digital equivalent of the physical cash, so the only public money that we have access to today, the digital equivalent of that. And it does this because it wants to reply to the increasing demand for digital payments. Um, so now that we've kind of understood the difference between public and private money and what the digital euro is, um, we can go a bit more into yeah. what it looks like. How does it actually like. work and what yeah. does it look like? How yeah. does it work? Exactly. So essentially, what initially when the ECB came out with the digital euro, it, it made it clear that it didn't want to have a direct relationship with citizens. So it essentially wants to distribute digital euros through intermediaries. And in the beginning, that was essentially the banks. And the banks had lobbied very hard for it. They really wanted only the digital euro to go through their infrastructure. Now, with, with the progress of the digital euro and also the proposal in the digital euro, um, it's, these intermediaries have been, have been expanded to include uh, credit institutions, electronic money institutions, and even public authorities in some case. So you could, for instance, access digital euros through your bank accounts, but also any other kind of uh, institution, for instance, uh, PayPal or these neobanks and 26. Um, now, in terms of how it would actually work, could you get your could you get your salary paid on it? There's some important limitations on the digital euro, and this is where positive money has been campaigning quite a lot. And an important um, important element is the holding limits. So the holding limits is essentially how much digital euros can I hold in my bank account? Now, the banks have lobbied very hard against the holding limit being too high because they essentially see it as competing with their bank deposits, right? Which is how the banks get partially get their funding. So in terms of receiving your salary, it really depends on the holding limits that policymakers are going to end up deciding on. Now, positive money thinks that there should be no holding limits or a very, very high holding limit. And the limit that the uh, ECB has been toying with is around 3,000 euros. And it's worth mentioning that initially the banks, they wanted to limit it to like 50 euros. I just want to go back to, 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 the, uh, to the role of private banks here. Um, They've initially responded uh, to the deliberations uh, on the development of the digital, digital euro. Um, how they've tried to influence that proceeding, those proceedings, like how, how big is their influence? Their, their influence has been huge. Banks are important to the ECB, but also they have a huge banking lobby, right? So the way that the banks have been able to influence the digital euro is A, in the beginning, really ensuring that the digital euro would only be used through their infrastructure. So they were really scared about getting competition from a public payment infrastructure. So this is why originally the ECB mainly referred to banks as the main distributors of, digital, of the digital euros. This has opened up. So in the latest proposal on the digital euro, uh, it's basically all payments service providers, which, as I mentioned, includes credit, uh, credit institutions, uh, electronic money institutions, but even public authorities. As positive money, we really 
uh, welcome this opening up because we do think it provides some healthy competition to banks. Uh, another way that the banks have really tried to influence the digital euro is on the holding limits and also on remuneration. So the ECB has made it clear that the digital euro is not going to be remunerated. We're not going to get interest on it, which makes the debate on the hold, holding limits even more important, right? Because imagine I'm a consumer and I have I open my banking app and I have two seemingly very similar accounts, one with um, bank deposits, digital euros. I can have an unlimited amount. Uh, it can be remunerated in my savings account. And on the other hand, I have an account with a limited 3,000 euros, digital, central bank digital euros that is unremunerated. A lot of people might not end up using those central bank digital euros. And that's why we think it's so important that the limits remain high or that there are no limits at all. Vicky Van Eck, you're the executive director of Positive Money Europe. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for.